Justin, the Aesthetic Cognitivism planning meeting just concluded, and uh, what are the, the conclusions regarding the research methodology, the potential research programs that will be instituted over the next several years? What, what's the thinking? Well, um, I don't know if we've come to a consensus, not a surprise oh, there, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I think there's definitely some movement in the direction of thinking, well, we need a little bit more conceptual clarity on ideas like what is the nature of understanding? How can that be broken down? How can we measure dimensions mm -hmm. of understanding? But then also, this idea of aesthetic cognitivism is that certain works of art are valuable because of what they do to our minds, the way they make us think in new and novel ways. Well, which works of art? Uh, under what conditions? When we're creating them or when we're consuming them? There are lots of other questions out there, and while we think we can point to little examples, this work of art seemed to have this really big effect, it'd be really helpful to get a broader panoramic view of various types of works of art in various types of contexts and see what kinds of con consequences they have cognitively. So what I'm kind of trying to encourage the, uh, the funding body to think about is what if we invite scholars from across various disciplines to contribute to that? Let's test out that hypothesis that works of art do this kind of cognitive work and start to get a description of under what conditions, when does that happen, who, um, in social groups or alone? Painting, while I'm seeing a painting, while I'm doing the painting, or in music, or dance, or when is it more, most likely to happen? Um, so at least that was one of the group's proposals, is to mm -hmm. do some kind of broad descriptive kind of uh, project. So develop that further, what, yeah. what would that mean? How, how many paintings or how, what kind of a sample size? Just want to get a sense of the nature of a, of, of a really thorough research project that a, a, a cognitive scientist like yourself would say, yeah, that, that, that's going to give me statistical results that I'm, I'm going to consider meaningful. Well, one of the nice things about trying to run this as a joined up call for proposals is it has the potential of creating something like a database. Okay. So if we can get these various projects coordinated in terms of what they're measuring, uh, this particular person in this particular country on this particular date in yeah. this kind of setting had an encounter with this artwork and this is what they report experiencing. That's one data point. Yes, right. And we could imagine thousands of those data thousands. points then into Whoa. a database, for uh -huh, instance, uh -huh. that's gathered by maybe a dozen different research teams. You have to standardize your methodology, I would you, think. That's right. And so you might think that, well, we'd have some uh, initial planning means that bring together various awardees, or okay. we can agree, all right, these are the kinds of measurements we'd be seeking. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone's going to be able to successfully get all of the, the different data points in exactly the same way, but can we at least find some convergence so we can step back and look at, well, here's where there seems to be the most action. And so now in the next phase, then the, uh, the cognitive scientists, the neuroscientists, those who can, will bring those patterns into the lab and mm -hmm. start looking more causally have something to go on instead of just sort of, well, I like this work yeah, of art, let's, yeah. let's start there. Yeah, so si simulate what, what that, that database would actually look like. You might have how many paintings or how many pieces of music would they be ranked? How many different uh, um, characteristics would you have of each one? Would, would those be ranked? You know, you know, just simulate it to see what, what that database would, would, would look like to be useful. Sure. Um, I mean, for a database like this to be useful, you would probably want to have some kinds of description of what kind of, what's, what is the work, um, what genre of arts does it fall into? Is it a painting? Is it a sculpture? Is it a song? Is it poetry? So you could imagine that we need data like what kind of work of art is it? Um, is it a painting? Is it a song? Is it poetry? Um, the, the respondent, the uh, informant, were they producing it or were they consuming it? Uh, where was this happening? What's their cultural context? What's their personal background? Are they an artist or do they have special training in that? That level of detail uh, we might be getting. And then what do they think changed because of their encounter with this? Um, did it generate new questions for them? Did it give them uh, motivation to maybe try to live their life with more purpose. So if you have one piece of artwork, how many different individual uh, consumers of that would you need to, uh, uh, to, to have some degree of 
data that you can manipulate. So you have one for each piece of artwork. How many different observations that do you do you need? Rather than using the artworks as the unit of analysis, I imagine using individual people or experiences as the unit of analysis. Oh. And the reason for that is that then maybe we can start discerning patterns in what sorts of artworks okay. seem to have recurrent features for the individual for the for various individuals okay, so then, then phrase it so from so from an individual point of view how many different pieces of of of, of art work and whatever form would, would you want to have for each individual well if we're just trying to get a landscape a sort of a broad view of which kinds of works of art seem to have these uh important yeah. uh, uh consequences for spiritual understanding we may be stuck with just one person's experience with one piece of art, but multiply that over thousands across cultures. But, but then don't you need a variance in that one person, something they think is banal, to something they think is, is exciting, to something they think is, gives them a religious experience? Don't you, need, don't you need some variety in each person? In a perfect world, we might want variety uh, either on the individual level or because looking I, I, at a if particular have, work. If you only have a one-to-one -one correspondence, how do, you, how, do you, how do you know what varies? So the thinking here is, right now, what we have is um, maybe art uh, theorists or historians saying, right. look, uh, Waiting for Godot has yeah. this kind of consequence right. on people. And by people, they mean other critics like me. <laughs> yeah. right. And what we're looking for is, is there another way to get a broad view of, well, what ordinary folks, or maybe artists and specialists, seem to keep reporting? Is it plays of a certain type that come up again and again and again across individuals? Or is it a particular play? Or is it that plays have this kind of consequence, but music has this kinds of consequence over and over again? So we can pool across individuals and we can pool across so artworks. What's, what's the entry question? to an, if, if the individual is your unit of, of interest, what's the entry question? Uh, you might think the entry question for a project like this is, under what conditions does participation in artistic activities yield um, spiritual progress or um, an advance in spiritual understanding and defining spiritual then in this sort of John Templeton way, right. meaning purpose in life, right. uh, sense right. of divinity, beauty. Uh, very small ass on Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so very broad. So, but that might be the question. Under what conditions okay. do we see this? Across cultures, uh, maybe even across the centuries because we could look at historical data. You could imagine um, uh, a, an artificial intelligence driven kind of big data textual analysis that's just sifting through Facebook and when people said, I saw this work of art and it changed my life and, and it's picking those up. How can we compare those to other types of art?